Praise the Lord today. Praise God. Okay, we're going to identify the whore of Revelation 17. Okay, and this might take a little bit, so bear with it. Stay with it. Learn from the Lord what He wants to teach you. Uh, just so Pat will know, I got my Green Bay Packers shirt on. Hallelujah. I'm going to stay in bounds, okay? Praise God. Uh, Ezekiel 16. Where it's talking about Jerusalem being a whore, and Jerusalem did commit whoredom. Okay, God says in this chapter that from her youth, you know, her mother was a Hittite, father an Amorite, or whatever it says. I didn't read that part here. Let me see. Um, yeah, thy father was an Amorite, and thy mother a Hittite. Okay, God's describing Jerusalem. Uh, and he's talking to his people in this chapter Ezekiel wrote this this is after the destruction of Jerusalem that took place under Nebuchadnezzar's reign in Babylon and when you get over to uh, verse 43 God's talking to his people here He's talking to this city, this wicked, vile city of Jerusalem here at this time. Because thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, but hast fretted me in these things. Behold, therefore I, will re I also will recompense thy way upon thine head, saith the Lord God. And thou shalt not commit this lewdness above all thine abominations. Behold, everyone that useth proverbs shall use this proverb against thee, saying, As is the mother... So is his. So is her daughter. Okay. So we can see here that Jerusalem had a mother. All right. And that mother is Babylon. Babylon is the great whore. Okay. Babylon is. I'm going to show you this. Thou art thy mother's daughter that lo that loatheth her husband and her children, and thou art the sister of thy sisters which loathed their husbands and their children. Your mother was a Hittite and your father an Amorite. Okay, and now we know that these people were pagans, okay, Hittites and Amorites. God drove them out. Israel is a representative of God, the nation of Israel. Israel is also the church, okay. We are the called out. Okay, Israel was called out. Abraham was called out of Ur of the Chaldees. God established a people, okay. And when they went into Jerusalem, God sanctified the city you, you see what I mean he built the temple there he did all these things and at one time that was a, a place of worship a place of adoration unto God but what did they do they played the harlot God said when you go in don't worship the gods of the Amorites and the Hittites and the Canaanites okay but Israel disobeyed and they did worship those gods and so therefore Jerusalem became a whore okay all right now, when you get to the end of the chapter, it says, uh, verse 58, Thou hast borne thy lewdness and thine abomination, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord God, I will even deal with thee as thou hast done, which hast despised the oath in breaking the covenant. Nevertheless, I will remember my covenant with thee in the days of thy youth, and I will establish unto thee an everlasting covenant. Okay? God's talking to Jerusalem. He's talking to this city. This, actually, it's like, you know, we know cities don't live. Real cities, you know, they're not living. They're just buildings. and It's the people, you see, God's speaking to here. <clears throat> God says in Jeremiah chapter 1, he, he told Jer Jeremiah, he said, Thou art a defensed city. I have made thee a defensed city. Okay, so we know God's speaking to people. Then thou shalt remember... God says he's going to make an everlasting covenant. Then thou shalt remember thy ways and be ashamed when thou shalt receive thy sisters, thine elder and thy younger, and I will give them unto thee for daughters, but not by thy covenant. And I will establish my covenant with thee, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord, that thou mayest remember and be confounded, and never open thy mouth any more because of thy shame, when I am pacified toward thee. For all that thou hast done, saith the Lord God. Hallelujah. God says he's going to be pacified toward Jerusalem. Okay. Hallelujah. Now when Jesus came, <clears throat> Jesus came and walked the earth and lived a perfect life. And, and he looked at Jerusalem 
and it's recorded in Matthew 23 and he, he, he weeped over Jerusalem oh Jerusalem Jerusalem you know if thou wouldest known you know this day the visitation you know how he saw long to gather you as a mother hen gathers her chicks you know he said but your house your house is left unto you desolate okay and so he prophesied in 24 Matthew 24 about all the stones being thrown down and there's still one wall left to go and that's the wailing wall and that wall has to come down that prophecy has been fulfilled to a large extent but there's still a little bit more to go and that's what's fixing to happen we're going to see it in the earth okay now getting over to Revelation 17 this is the great whore okay this is the great whore and we have the description here uh, you made a comment Pat about um, staying in bounds you know with the scripture and in your video Revelation chapter 17 um, video that you made two part series you, you use verse 14 to say that Jerusalem that this chapter was written before the destruction of Jerusalem and and then you you said how do we know that Revelation was written in 90 AD well we nobody knows when it was written actually the scholars most of the scholars from the early writings Irenaeus and other people uh, say that it was written around this time in the reign of Domitian okay but we don't know nobody knows for sure when it was written that's not relevant okay what's relevant is who is this whore okay and the descriptions right here in the chapter all right it says uh and there came one of the seven angels chapter 17 which had the seven vials and talked with me saying unto me come hither I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore see it's a great whore that sitteth upon many waters okay there's a key right there many waters where she's sitting upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet colored beast full of names of blasphemy having seven heads and ten horns and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication now see she had, there's another indication of who she is see a golden cup in her hand 